Yo, what's going on everybody? It is a little bit after 9 a.m. here on the Tuesday before the Boston Marathon. So six days out. Last workout. It's a taper session. Six times, three minutes at threshold, 45 second recovery. <laughs> Rough one complete. Nice and easy. Easing into the first one. First one was a little bit slow, but that's all right. I'm not really trying to build fitness through this one. Just trying to stay sharp. Getting a little antsy, so I definitely pull back on the effort towards the end there. Try to make sure I keep this as a sharpening exercise and not an early race. All right, finished the last one. Now we're gonna do a little bit of a cool down. Let's head inside, take a look at the numbers. So I know a lot of you guys are probably doing two week tapers and three week tapers seem to be coming more and more common amongst marathon runners these days. But I've tried all of those and they always just seemed a little bit too long for me. It seemed like I was taking my foot off the gas just a little bit too soon and a little bit too much. And by the time I got to race day, I always felt a little bit groggy. So I've been switching over to a 10 day taper for a couple of reasons. One is so that way I can kind of stay sharp for a little bit longer. Two is because I don't really think that the three week taper is what I need in terms of recovering from the marathon block. And the third thing is 10 days is a day where I believe that like within that period of time, if it's shorter than 10 days, any workouts really aren't going to help you. But at 10 days or a little bit longer than that, those workouts can still contribute to your fitness on marathon race day. So if I'm doing 10 day tapers and workouts that are within that 10 day weekend, don't really help you for fitness on race day, why do I do them? The reason why I do it is so that way I can maintain that level of sharpness so that way I can keep fresh in my memory and in my muscle memory what it's like to run at threshold pace, what it's like to run at marathon effort, what those things are supposed to feel like. And then also for my body, I want my body to not start thinking, all right, this is vacation time. You know, it's not summer break and the school year is over. We still have finals to kind of get through. So I like to make sure that I'm still doing things that remind the body what that turnover is supposed to feel like, but also I do wanna make sure that those workouts are a little bit lighter than usual, so that way overall through the process of that taper, I can kind of come out from underwater from all the work that I've been doing and let the body respond to a new level of fitness that is going to be available and useful to me for race day. So let's talk about the two workouts that I did during my taper. Now, the first one that I did was a couple of days or three days before the workout that you've already seen the footage of, and that was my mini long run. And so that one was about a half marathon in distance, and it was two miles of warm up, and then four times one mile at marathon effort, and then one mile of float, that one mile of float being a about one minute per mile slower than my marathon effort. And that one felt actually pretty terrible when I started out. The first mile uh, ended up being pretty much a, a lot of uphill and into headwind. And it was a 6.45. My, I think my marathon effort on flat surface without wind should translate somewhere between like 6.30s and 6.40s. So this one was a little bit slower than that. Not by a lot, five seconds is not a huge deal. Um, but I think I probably worked a little bit harder than I was supposed to and, and mentally that was a little bit challenging because I did see the split come in. Second mile was 6.36, third one was 6.40 and fourth one was 6.38. And in between that, rather than jogging to recover, I still had to keep the pace up relatively high. And so the idea with that is to be able to keep one longer extended effort. So eight miles of work, although like four of those miles were not that much work. So one minute per mile slower than my marathon effort is kind of in between my marathon effort and my easy run pace. So kind of like an easy plus that was put in there, but also it still keeps the heart rate up a little bit. So that way 
I would it was able to get like a longer run workout in without taxing the body quite so much. And the heart rates, I think, were really nice there. I know there is a one mile recovery, which is a really long time, even if it's at a float kind of pace. Um, but the heart rates came in at 165, 164, 157, and 158, um, with that 165 being kind of the top end of my marathon effort range, and then ending on that fourth one, which was pretty flat at 158 or 157 for the third one, uh, I think is also uh, a really good indicator in my fitness uh, because the longer that I could stay at like that 160 beats per minute heart range for me, um, I know that that's going to be a, a heart rate and an exertion level that I can maintain for an entire marathon distance. Uh, I did run in the endorphin elite for that day and I did start to develop a little bit of the pain underneath like the pads of my foot. So if this is my toes, like right here on the pads, that's something that I sometimes get um, usually in some shoes and usually at some times, usually as I get very close to a marathon training block. I don't know if it was the shoes or if it's just kind of those phantom pains that develop during a taper, um, but I've decided that I don't think it's going to be the shoe that I bring to race in uh, for marathon Monday. So the next workout is the one that you saw uh, the video for that's a taper threshold session you, my bread and butter workout that I do multiple times uh, even per week as I'm getting ready for a marathon is six times six minutes at threshold with one minute recoveries this taper version is still six repetitions but only three minutes so half the work and a little bit more than half the recovery before Tokyo I did this workout at six times three minutes with 30 seconds recovery. So essentially just cutting the work and the recovery in half, but maintaining the same work to rest ratio. But that 30 seconds was just way too short. It felt like a very difficult workout to do like the week of a marathon. So I extended the recovery to 45 seconds um, and it still feels short and it still feels like a workout, but it didn't feel tiring. And in fact, I felt myself having to hold back as you heard me talk about uh, when I was out there on the route. And so uh, I feel like that's exactly where I want to be for a workout during uh, a taper. And then the heart rates for those reps was right around 160 for each of those. Uh, the fifth one, which felt like the hardest one, was at 164. Um, and I feel like that is a an interesting sign because, like I just mentioned, 160 is my heart rate for marathon effort. Um, and the pace is actually ended up being pretty close to about high end of marathon uh, effort for me, but it felt like I was working threshold. So I think that's more of my body just still kind of like recovering. So my physiological effort was marathon effort, but my perceived effort, what I thought I was doing was closer to threshold. So I went with like kind of what it felt like. I didn't really worry about the heart rate or the pace. I usually don't look at that kind of stuff too much during the interval itself. I usually just kind of run on feel because I'm gotten dialed in really well after years and years of using stride foot pods and heart rate monitors and all sorts of other metrics and tools. Uh, I've kind of figured out intuitively what that feels like. And that took me a really long time to kind of dial in. But now that I have, um, I'm using my perceived effort in order to kind of direct this taper threshold session because I wanted to get that fast turnover running faster than what felt like marathon effort and still doing it in a way that I would not tax the body too much because now that we're six days out, at least as the time of the workout, that's something that I didn't want to over do it and I've definitely overdone it like the week of a marathon before and kind of started early racing and regretted it later. So I'm glad that I was able to hold back a little bit for this workout. And I did run in the Adios Pro 3 for this workout, which that is a shoe that I think normally would be a really great choice to run the Boston Marathon. But I think my pair of Adios Pro 3, uh, I think I broke a rod because there's this horrible clicking sounds that happens whenever I'm running in the shoe and you could hear it really clearly in the parts when I'm talking to the camera, but also especially when I'm not talking to the camera, it's really loud. And so because I think one of the rods is busted in my Audios Pro 3, I'm not gonna be running in that shoe either. I've already made a selection. I know what I'm gonna run in uh, for Boston, but I'll leave that as a little bit of a surprise for you guys to find out as we get a little bit closer to the marathon. So check it out on Instagram. That's where I'll be dropping that information. Not that it's like a huge deal or whatever, but in case you guys are curious, I'll be posting it there in a few days. Now, the rest of the days that I'm gonna be running for the taper are gonna be pretty easy. I usually don't take rest days, although I did take a rest day after the Cherry Blossom 10 mile a couple weeks ago now. But for the rest of the days, I'm gonna be doing, until we get to like marathon weekend, I'll be doing like six to 10 miles a day, whatever kind of feels 
feels good. Um, so anywhere between like an hour and an hour and a half of running for me at my easy paces. And then once we get to marathon weekend, things are gonna get a little bit crazy. Like I land Friday, I don't know if I'll have time to run, so I may take kind of like a travel day slash rest day. Um, and then Saturday, I'm going to two different shakeouts. So I'll have about six miles and change, maybe seven miles on the day. And then Sunday, I'll be doing another shakeout. So three miles on the day before the marathon. So a pretty light week, getting lighter as we get closer to race day. Uh, and that's gonna be pretty much my taper. And as the time I'm filming this, I'm leaving for Boston the next day. So I'm filming this on Thursday. I'm leaving for Boston on Friday. Hopefully I can see you guys. I mentioned that I'm going to be doing a couple of different shakeout events. I'll post links in the description to everything that I'm going to be doing down below. Saturday, I'm doing a shakeout run with Puma. Laura Green, my friend Laura Green, is going to be leading us uh, to do a couple of shakeout miles along the river in Boston. Uh, I'll be there as well. Lots of fun Puma stuff to try on or get some giveaways. Uh, so that should be a lot of fun. And then Saturday night, I'll be doing, this is not a running event, but I'll be hosting a live stream live uh, where I'll be interviewing Ben True and Nico Montañez, two of the fastest marathoners in America, and be doing it in front of a live audience and broadcasting it on the live stream as well. So that should be a lot of fun. That'll be Saturday at 6 p.m. at the ASICS pop-up. And then on Sunday, I'll be hosting a shakeout run with Rabbit over starting at their pop-up. Uh, and that should be a lot of fun too. There's gonna be a really nice Kofuzi Rabbit track bag giveaway. We've got a bunch of RSVP, so hopefully you can get there early to snag one of those bags. And then after the race, I'm gonna be heading over to the Bandit pop-up on Newberry Street before I hit the showers. So that way I can get my photograph taken, get a portrait taken in my race kit and with my Boston Marathon medal. I'm super excited for that. So hopefully I'll be able to see you at one of these spots over the course of the weekend. And for all of you guys that are racing on Monday, good luck to you guys. I hope you have the race of your lives, whatever that means for you. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs, and I will see you in Boston. Yo, what's going on?